Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of like uh, watching South Africa right now, and we're seeing a lot of people in South Africa who were in favor of ending apartheid now realize that, that was a massive mistake. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're seeing even people who are were in the ANC, you know, um, now realizing that oh, we're we're checkmated. Um, I don't know if they use that <laughs> term. The, the the thing we fought for for nearly a hundred. Well, I'm trying to think. When, yeah, the ANC has been around for like a hundred years, I think. The the thing we fought for for a hundred years is now just ruined. Within twenty five years of it being implemented. <laughs> fucking amazing. Yeah, and of course this is all because of an information embargo that you're not allowed to talk about the biological facts of the matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, except on the internet. So, I uh, I met I ran into a uh, a man from South Africa uh, at my workplace the other night, and um, this dude was. You know, he, he was pretty apolitical, and uh, he he had a uh, a black girlfriend. And uh, w- we got to talking about the situation in South Africa, and, and I was just kind of asking him, you know, questions, and I didn't tell him anything about my, my views or anything. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I asked him if he thought that there was a long-term solution in South Africa that included uh, the, the whites and the blacks living together. And, uh, he's, he quickly without hesitation said, absolutely not. And and this is, (laughs) this is, this is an apolitical guy who has a black girlfriend, you know, the, the whole nine. And, And he, he just without hesitation said, there's no way that the whites and the blacks can, can live together in South Africa. Did he want, uh, the whites moving to, um, Europe or to America or something or he's pretty apolitical. He doesn't give a shit. He got the fuck out of there. Oh, okay. With and and I think that any any white person there with uh, the resources should do what he did and get the fuck out of there. And, and I mean, it seems like a you know a, quite a few have already done that. Like quite a few just left before you know the ship is sinking. If I was there right now, I, I would, and I was just poor as dirt. I would sell the last of my possessions and leave the country with the clothes on my back. Mm-hmm. Well, to be honest, I used to know a lot of South Africans who escaped post-apartheid, and a lot of them were pro Mandela. It, it, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So like, how can you be pro the guy who basically, well, made your country inhospitable? Yeah, I mean, I have seen some, like, people saying, well, maybe they deserve it because some of these people that, e- even the ones that moved out, say that, um, oh, we still like Mandela. He was a great guy. Yeah, racial unity, blah, blah, blah. I'm a rainbow nation. So. Well, it's, uh-huh. it's what I've been saying for a while, that, that this isn't a rational idea that these people are putting forward. They, they're, you know, operating from a fear response. They understand that there will be huge consequences if they actually explain that Mandela uh, was a terrible person. Uh, mm-hmm. now not only merely incorrect about things, but he was uh, his wife was a torturer. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and it, like in the same way that it's kind of like an autistic libertarian thing to like expect all Americans to understand the issues with the Federal Reserve. Um, you know, it's kind of like a uh, a very um, cold economic way of looking at it to to think like, oh, these people should just uh, vote with their feet and get out of there. But like, I mean, when you're born into it and that's all you know, um, you know, the the unknown of, you know, leaving to somewhere else where you know nothing and no one with nothing. And, you know, that 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 seems more daunting than the hellhole that you currently live in. So I. I, I just I hate it for those people. Mm-hmm. 